Hello everyone, welcome to another video. It is Francesco here. So in this video, what I wanted to do is grab a moment to sort of share what I use in my routine. Now, I've got a lot of emails recently talking about resources and sort of like the topic of how I do my processes. And I thought I'd share a few things that I use currently which is almost like a timestamp for all of the resources I use right now. Now, of course, this is going to be an overview, so there are going to be lots of different resources, and of course, I've used them in my system, so my system is going to be totally different to yours. So let's start off with task management. Now, I know a lot of you guys have great task management apps implemented. I use a few task management applications. Uh, it's sort of an overall experience. So I mainly use Todoist. Now, Todoist is obviously uh, my task management of choice. Uh, it works very similar to the likes of Things 3, Tick Tick. You know, a couple of other applications in this space, To Do, you know, those sort of one are very useful. But the good thing that I like about Todoist is it works sort of off a GTD style system with the ability to stay flexible. So I use GTD uh, as, as, as a big picture. I modify a lot of it to sort of go to my routine. But the idea of GTD, collect, uh, process, you know, organize, and then review later once you've completed the task, obviously that doing process, is something that I go off in my day. So uh, if you don't know what GTD is, feel free to check it out. I feel really comfortable being someone who read GTD at 15 and then actually being able to implement it was very helpful. So I use Todoist as my main task management. I clip everything in inbox. You guys know how I use Todoist. I will include the video below if you don't know how I use Todoist. The other application I will use is a holistical view. And what I mean by this is, so for example, uh, you know, let's say uh, from a 20,000 foot view to a 30,000 foot view, I can see all of my tasks in Todoist. They're the next seven days, really the things that will get me towards my weekly and monthly goals. When it comes to like six months to a year, I try to plan a bit more holistically with the likes of Trello. So I will use Trello as a way to view my next six to one year in period of time in terms of projects. Now, there aren't any micro tasks in here. There might be a few ideas sprung about in the checklist function, but everything in Trello is a big picture view of all of my stuff I wanna do. Now, I hope that makes sense. I'll try and point towards my, what my Trello looks like without revealing too much, but um, it's a way for me to sort of see everything as a whole. So to do this is more like, you know, seven um, month, week, month view, and Trello is more like six month to a year view. In terms of like big planning, like planning my goals for like my next five to 10 years, I tend to just use paper. Um, I have a, uh, in my journal, I have like my year targets, uh, end of year targets, which is great. However, I use like a big A3 uh, piece of paper to sort of plan and visualize my targets. I tend to like screw up at the end because I tend to take out all the actions needed and implement it at the end. It tends to stay up here. So my sort of big picture goals are always on paper. When it comes to note-taking applications, yes, I'm using Evernote as my default uh, note-taking application. I use this for storing information, uh, like, like documents, uh, like clipping things, like everything and everything that uh, I use in my system that I don't necessarily have to create for. Obviously, I create notes inside of Evernote, but when it comes to creation, I use Google Drive. So I'll use Evernote and Google Drive, and I'll also use Bear as well. Bear at the moment is solely for script creating. I find it easy to use an iPhone, easy to use, especially when I'm like, uh, you know, filming content and I need like uh, a bit of script information or like like details about an app or something like that. I can use Bear for that. It's really functional and I find it very easy to use. So at the moment, they're the real core experiences. I actually don't use Google Keep. I don't use Apple Notes. I don't use anything like that. And I don't really clip anything uh, outside of that. I may take, um, the only thing I'll do with Todo is just to mention, is I'll use the Alexa to send in tasks and I'll use Siri occasionally, but really nothing in a big, like major, like over the top. When it comes to calendar applications, I will use, on my phone I use Calendars 5 by Riedel. Great application, I find it very easy to use and I hear they're working on Calendar 6. I also use on Mac, I will use the Fantastic Out 2 for Mac and I will also use Google Calendar on web because I find the experience easy to use. Now I have, struggled with calendar applications in the past and to be honest I'd be totally happy with sticking with Google Calendar for web it doesn't look great but it does the job you know when sunrise went it was very you know bad for me because I like I put all my time and time and dedication into sunrise uh, and when it went it was sort of like ah oh, damn I'm gonna have to spread my experiences out so that's the reason I have calendars 5 on on my iOS and Fantastical 2 on Mac 
because I actually don't like Fantastic Cab 2 on iPhone. I've got this weird thing with it, I just can't get comfortable with it. So that's the reason I don't use it on iPhone. Uh, Calendars 5 is better there. And I'm looking forward to what they do with their Mac app if they ever release one, because that will be an interesting you know, switch, whether that's something that I would actually move to on the Mac. Questions as well, do I have any IFTT or Zapier statements? I do have a few. So whenever inside of Google Calendar, I create a uh, new meeting, right? That has got the keyword meeting in, um, or actually it's just a new event, I think. I pretty much created that from scratch. Uh, basically what it will do is it will automatically put a Todoist task in my inbox in Todoist. And essentially it will ha have create meeting notes for meeting and then the title of the meeting. This way I can create any agendas I need or any notes I am planning for that meeting. That is a handy Zapier one to have. If I start anything in Slack, uh, I can choose the Slacks I have, but I only do it for my work Slack. If I start anything, it will automatically be created as a Todoist task, adding any of the context into the description on Todoist. So those two are Zapier ones. The IFTT statement that I have really is just for the Siri and uh, Todoist integration, which I've done a video on separately. Now, many people ask what sort of time tracking tools do I use? I as I've mentioned in a couple of other videos uh, on Go Skills, um, I actually uh, use hours as a way to audit every month. So I will grab my iPhone for the free version of iOS uh, hours, and I will, uh, one week every month, will audit my entire week and give myself a report of what I spent my time on. This can be granular, it can be micro actions, but this way I get a big picture of what I'm spending my time on per client, per information, and that way I can really go, okay, I'm spending too much time on emailing or I'm spending too much time on dot, 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 task, et cetera. And this way I can like, like progress. I need to spend more time on health and fitness. I need to spend more time on family time, et cetera. I can give a better audit to my day and that way uh, I, you know, I can use it as I go. So I only use one week every month to do an audit. When it comes to like, to like tracking tools in the background, I use Timings2 and Cubeserve at the moment. They're just two that run in the background. I'm yet to decide which I'm gonna go with. Timing 2 has more reporting functions, but Cubeserve actually has uh, some nice demonstrative functions for uh, timesheets, which I quite like. Um, so they're the time tracking experiences that I have. Many people ask whether I have a Pomodoro timer. I actually don't. Uh, I don't really work on Pomodoro timers. I think I do it automatically in my head. I probably will probably move to this when I'm in a house or somewhere else, but at the moment, I'm pretty comfortable with my work setup. The one thing that I do do is focus really, really hard. So when I'm in a sort of work state, I will not touch my phone, so I won't answer any calls for a long period of time. Uh, and I'll have like, you know, intense hours or two hours or three hours of work and then have like a five minute break. Uh, so I work in longer sort of break uh, time periods um, and they're really intense. So I, I won't touch my phone. I'll keep, I'll keep track of the task. I might have like a YouTube video in the background or a podcast. If it's like a task that is, uh, I guess like quite admin based, if it's something intense like creation, I'll keep a, like a lo-fi song in the background which will keep me just uh, titling along. In terms of productivity apps, I would say that that's really my expanse of using them. If I've missed an area, can you put in the comments because I really feel like I've missed an area. Um, Overall, they're the sort of apps I use at the moment. Now, I don't really go too deep with stuff. People expect me to go really deep with it, but I keep my system pretty fluent and I'm quite loyal to a lot of applications until I am fully comfortable to move or have considered that move in great amount of detail. So that's one of the things I would say to you guys if you're looking, if you're notice you've been jumping around the applications a lot, take a step back and consider whether you should stick with one service and get comfortable understanding the advanced functions of it. When I started the likes of Evernote, there were some other note-taking applications out there, which I could have moved to, which had a few similar features, but I was always very confident that I wanted to go advanced with the likes of Evernote, Todoist, Trello, and things like that. So obviously I'd be comfortable uh, if you guys like made sure that you didn't necessarily like skip applications, try to understand the advanced functionality as much as you can. Anyway guys, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope this added a little bit of value and gave you an idea of my workflow as a whole. Um, you know, this is going to, I probably will send this to a lot of people. So if you're in email contact with me, uh, you know, it's really great that you've been communicating with me. So thank you very much uh, 
for dropping me a line. I really appreciate it. If you haven't yet, feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this sort of roundup, you might enjoy the weekly email. The weekly email is basically like a, a roundup email, which I'll do every single week covering productivity apps and resources. You know, you can sign up and if you don't enjoy it in a week, two weeks, three weeks time, feel free to unsubscribe. You know, that's totally fine, um, but it would be lovely to have you there uh, for a few days at least. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to sharing more content with you. Make sure to have a great week, keep productive, and I'll see you guys very soon. Cheers.